The Soybean School on RealAgriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans, and High Stick NT. reason why we're talking about the vegetative and reproductive stages a lot to some of you you're thinking like this is about as basic as it gets but there is so much confusion in the countryside regarding proper crop staging and soybeans is no exception to that proper crop staging all the research that has been done to date has been targeted to a certain range or window within a crop management period and if we can't target our crops in order to apply that management, really the research has, that has been done is almost meaningless because you know that research has been done to target a certain growth stage and if we miss it that means that we're out of you know off label in terms of applying that research to crop management. And soybeans we read in the press constantly like spray a fungicide at the pin bean stage in soybeans for example <coughs> like there's no such thing as pin bean stage in soybeans or mm. or the pods you know in the middle of the canopy there's pods in the middle of the canopy well it doesn't matter about the pods in the middle of the canopy regarding our stages on the soybeans it's all about the nodes at the top of the plant so that's what we need to fo focus on we need to focus on the vegetative stages for weed control yield potential and we need to keep that mindset that vegetative, vegetative stages and reproductive stages are very important. Okay, so reproductive stages, so the first one is stage R1, and all of this is on that handout that you have, by the way. And so the first stage is R1, and that's one of the easiest ones to identify because just a flower anywhere on the plant, that is R1. So that's a really easy one. R2 is a wee bit more tricky, and this is a blown up image from one of your, um, the images in your handout. And you have to identify the top node, okay? So from now on, in all the rest of the R stages, you have to identify the top node. Figure out which one that is, okay? Because this node right here is actually the top node, and it's shared by a leaf that is unrolled, okay? The trifoliate leaf, it is unrolled. This leaf is on, also on the main stem right here, this trifoliate leaf, but it's not unrolled yet, so we don't count that node, okay? And at R2 stage, that's when we have a flower at one of the two nodes at the top of the plant, okay? So there could be stuff happening below these nodes, but it doesn't matter in the R stages, it's all about the top nodes, okay, in soybeans. And this is not Ridgetown College, this is not Ontario, you know, way of staging things. This is an internationally accepted way of staging soybean plants. And a lot of the soybean research is, is around, is geared to around that, okay? So those, that's the R2 stage. So a, a flower on one of the two upper nodes, that's the R2. <coughs> the first flower is on one of those upper two nodes. That's, that's R1, R2. Yeah, fl first flower could be anywhere on the plant, that's R1, but if it's on, um, one of the two upper nodes and it's R2. So it immediately jumps to R2. Well, uh, usually, you, usually the first flower appears somewhere in the middle of the canopy. Mm -hmm. So it would not appear at the top of the canopy for R1. Okay. okay, so good question. So R2, R3 would be looking at the top four nodes. Okay, so R3, R4, R5, R6, we're always looking at the top four nodes then, so it's a little bit different than R2. In R3, we're looking for a pod, so here's a node, and if the pod is 3 sixteenths of an inch long on one of the four top nodes, that is R3, okay? And if that pod is 3 quarters of an inch long, gets the 3 quarters of an inch long on the top four nodes, it is R4. Okay, so those are the pod forming stages. R1, R2 are the flowering stages, and R2, R3, R4 are the pod forming stages. And then next, of course, are the seed forming stages, and that's R5, and if you can feel a seed on one of these pods on the upper four nodes, if you can feel a seed in the pod, that is R5, okay? And then R6 is if one of these pods is just full of seed, packed full of seed in the upper four nodes, that is R6. So it doesn't matter if a pod is already full, you know, below the four nodes, if we still have, you know, seeds that are just starting to fill on the top four nodes, it's still in R5. Okay, it doesn't matter about what's happening below these 
for nodes. So that's very important, especially when we talk about fungicide application timing. Looking for some ways to increase the level of responses to management. And we found one, we think we found one in the fungicide timing. So on top of the 2.3, we're seeing another bushel to bushel and a half on top of the 2.3 if we apply a fungicide on at between R2 and R3. Most of our work, what we did with that 2.3, has been on R3, R4, even close to R5, which is like what we had at the time, the best information that we had from the US, from chemical companies, that's what they were saying. But we're thinking based on this latest data set that we have, we have two or three years data now, and we're gonna continue with that for this year as well, that R2 to R3 timing gives us between three and a half and four bushel yield response on average, and depending on what uh, this year and even next year will show us regarding this timing. Okay. So Dave, how long do we have then, if these are R2, before they'll hit R3, how many days? Yeah, so this is a, a growth stage or a stage of development timing chart from Iowa State University. R1, only four to five days long, and R2 is about 10 days long, of course, depending on the temperature. So if these beans hit R2 three days ago, we have about another seven days within that window, an uh, early application window. If this timing thing holds true, that means that these beans would have about another seven days in order to hit that timing window for fungicide application. Which is really early when you think about it logically. These beans have at least 70 days left to maturity. We know so much of yield is made late in the season and these fungicides only last maybe two weeks. There's no visual disease here whatsoever. So it's pretty counterintuitive to think that you have to spray now to get your highest response, but that's what our data is showing right now. And so yeah. that's why we're doing the work on this.